Hey folks, it's Tom from Something the Rest here and welcome to Behind the Scenes for April 2013. First on the list is the RuneScape 3 beta program. This is the HTML5 engine as well as a new customizable interface. Sounds very spiffing indeed. Now the schedule for this beta is as follows. On the 3rd of April, which is this Wednesday, members will be able to sign up for this RuneScape 3 beta. And then next Wednesday on the 10th of April, registration for this beta will close. The week after that, on the 17th of April, the beta will actually start. And then on the 24th of April, the new alpha for the new customizable interface will begin. Pretty self-explanatory, so let's move on. Next up on the list is Dungeoneering Dual Wielding, which is for free to play and members and a new charm collector which is members only. So basically you'll be able to dual wield in Dungeoneering now because they'll be adding new offhand weapons which currently are not in the game and a new Dungeoneering reward which will cost a hundred thousand Dungeoneering tokens. Uh, it's basically a friendly imp that sits in your backpack and collects all your charms for you so you don't have to pick them up yourself. So if you're not nearly 99 summoning already, then you might want to consider getting that. So next up on the list is a significant upgrade to Castle Wars and the Jewel Arena. They'll both be getting graphical updates, but for Castle Wars the rewards will be slightly different. Castle Wars tickets will be replaced with new silver and gold tickets. Silver tickets can be spent on consumable items within the shop and are awarded no matter if a player wins, loses or draws. Gold tickets will be awarded if you win or draw and can be spent on more sought after items. You'll also be able to wear helmets, use prayer altars in the spawn room and wait less time in the lobby for the next game. They're also improving the stats of the reward armor and they're making them sort of hybrid use so it'll be better for multi-combat in Castle Wars. And there's also going to be a change to the trimmed completionist cape requirements. More info on that soon. For the dual arena, they're basically just going to reduce the number of visible arenas. So at the minute, I think you can currently see six arenas on the map, but you might be able to just see three or something like that after this update. But to combat overcrowding, which I seriously doubt will happen, there will be an instance automatically generated for anyone who can't get into one of those original arenas. So there's no way that you can miss out on your duel. Hooray! So next up on the list is Hunter Charms. Now before I get into this, I'm just going to show you a few things so that you know what I'm talking about. This is called a Charm Sprite and this is where it's located, which is just south of the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Now, the article says we originally added the Hunter Charm sprites back in 2010 as a way for hunters to gather summoning charms. All associated gameplay will be reworked to be more fun, easier to use and more rewarding. The sprites themselves will be easier to see and catch. The XP you earn will be much more generous, scaling with your hunter level you'll be getting many more charms from the activity, including blue and crimson charms, and they're also adding a mystical charm slice, which is what you get from catching these charm sprites, acting as a wild card when making charms. Yak Tui, who I'm assuming is an NPC in that area, will now look after your hunting equipment while you're away, and Yak Tui's stick can be upgraded by those who really get to grips with the area offering XP boosts to all hunting and increased chance to get new mystical charm slices. So basically this is an upgrade to hunting and you'll be able to get charms from doing hunting. So next up on the list is quite a major EOC update. So firstly they're going to make your stats mean more in combat and people with higher stats will basically have a significant advantage over those who have lower stats. They're going to change armor to bring back offensive and defensive armor as well as have more hybrid gear with stats to match. So for example, Bandos will be offensively oriented and will be all about increasing your max hit. Also, the programming that controls basic hit chances will be changed to make the whole combat experience more enjoyable. And 
prayers and potions will be more effective in combat, all because of your feedback, so keep giving that feedback, guys. Woo! Next up on the list is quite an exciting major update to the God Wars dungeons. Yes, for a small GP fee, you'll be able to hire your own version of each dungeon. For those who like a tougher challenge, however, a hard mode can be accessed. In this mode, the God Wars bosses who featured in the World Wakes quests will have all the new combat mechanics they had in the quest, but with far higher stats. So, for example, the Kriara boss had lots of whirlwinds that were going around the room. In this hard mode, these guys are really, really tough and can be accessed by you and a group of your friends, much like the Calphite King boss. Offering a far more valuable drops than their normal brethren, Dare you take on the fight? And finally, have you ever been training your skills, watching your XP dials and thought, that's odd, I wonder why I didn't get any XP for that? Well apparently so have Jagex, and this month they're going to add small amounts of XP to over 30 processors in RuneScape, which ranges from grinding unicorn horns, picking flax, making unfinished potions and adding seeds to plant pots. All sorts of processes that really should have given XP in the first place, apparently. And that's really about it for this article. Quite an interesting month, I have to say. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, then feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.